For more on the life and legacy of Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, we are joined by Loyola Law Professor Jessica Levinson. Uh, professor, thank you so much. I want to start with this idea that, you know, a lot of younger women right now may not realize what she actually did for working women, uh, especially in the legal profession. Uh, she went to Stanford up in the Bay Area, of course. When she graduated, as you know, Professor, she couldn't even get a, a law firm to hire her, so she started her own. How significant was her presence on the Supreme Court? Well, it was hugely important. As you said, there was 191 years when there were all men on the court. And we know that people make different decisions based on different life experiences. And one of the things that she brought to the table was a different perspective based on her gender. She also brought a lot to the table as a jurist of any gender in terms of working towards compromise, working towards consensus. One thing I was thinking about, Marla, when you were talking to me about, you know, she graduated from Stanford. She was very high in her class. She could not get an interview. Uh, there was a very prestigious firm who said, we're not going to interview her. At their 100-year anniversary, when she was on the court, they asked her to come speak. She said yes, and she said she started her remarks by saying, no hard feelings. I'm now a member of a more selective law firm. It's actually nine members. And I think that shows her approach to life, and it shows that she didn't hold a grudge, she used humor, she came back, she spoke at that firm, and she poked a little fun at what was a very difficult path to the court. Uh, last year I was at an event that, that you hosted with Nina Totenberg, who's a longtime court reporter for NPR, uh, and she wrote a book about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who of course was the second woman on the court. And the two of them, one more liberal, one more conservative, had a really interesting relationship. They did, and it, one of the things that Justice O'Connor said when she was appointed was, I want to be the first but not the last. And I think it was a big relief for her when Justice Ginsburg, who had a very different background and a very different legal philosophy, was appointed to the bench. Justice Ginsburg famously said that Justice O'Connor was the best big sister she could ever ask for. And there's one anecdote that I think really speaks to their relationship, where there was a big gender equality case called Virginia Military Institute as to whether or not VMI had to accept female candidates. The court ultimately said, yes, they do. And that case was originally assigned to Justice O'Connor. Justice O'Connor reportedly in conference said to the Chief Justice, Justice Rehnquist, this one isn't for me. This is for Ruth. This is her life's work. And I think that shows how they might have had different philosophies. Justice O'Connor knew that opinion would be written in a different way, but she also wanted to provide Justice Ginsburg that moment and knew what her background was. Well, she went to uh, Stanford with Justice Rehnquist and he proposed to her. She said no. And of course, you know, they, they were lifelong uh, buddies. What an amazing story. Uh, Professor, I want to know you personally, uh, how did she inspire and influence you? So I think it makes a big difference to be able to look at places of power and see somebody who is either your gender or your racial background or your religious background. And I was never aware of a time when there wasn't at least one Supreme Court justice who was a woman. I will also say as somebody who teaches the law, I feel deeply her decisions, what her approach was to decision making. And um, she had said at the end of her career that she was upset that she stepped down. She felt she stepped down too soon and that she felt her legacy was being uh, whittled away or erased. So for me, it's both personal but also professional because I get to still teach many of those cases. Of course, the court was more in the center when she was on the court. She stepped down to uh, care for her ailing husband, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe she would come to regret that decision, as you mentioned. Uh, Jessica Levinson, thank you so much. Great insight yeah. into a great American, Sandra Day O'Connor. Thank you.